Okay, so this video is all about probability, and specifically Venn diagrams. So if we have a look here, we've got Venn diagram shows probability of customers booking at Harris Hotel. It's important to read these questions carefully. Uh, R is the event that he books a room. So this whole circle here, everything inside the circle adds up to the probability that they're going to book a room. So B is the event that they book a breakfast. Uh, D is the event that a customer books dinner. Why down the probability that a customer books breakfast but does not book a room? So if you have a look at all the breakfast circle here, they are within the circle of a room. So therefore, it's, you can't have breakfast without having a room. So therefore, the probability is just zero. Right, now the next one here. Given that the events B and D are independent, so this term independent here, if it's independent or statistically independent, what that means is that the probability of B times the probability of D equals the overlap, so the probability of B and D. So that's if they're independent. So if independent, then this happens. So the probability of B is, if we add up all the circle of B, it's not just 0 0.33, it's 0 0.33 plus 0 0.27, so that's going to be 0 0.6 times probability of D. Now the probability of D is everything inside D here. So that's going to be this one, this one, and this one. So that's 0 0.42 plus T. And because it's independent, that equals the overlap. So the overlap between B and D, if we have a look at that, is this space here. It's the overlap between B and D. So that equals 0 0.27. So if we've got 0 0.6 times by 0 0.42 plus T equals 0 0.27. If we divide by 0 0.6, we get 0 0.42 plus T equals 0 0.45. So therefore, if you take away 0 0.2, or 2, t equals 0 0.03. So now we know that, that value there is 0 0.03. So that's the uh, value of t. Hence, find the value of u. Now, in Venn diagrams, all the probabilities have to add up to 1. So if you add up all the other probabilities, we've got this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, and that one plus u, they must all add up to 1. So 0 0.33 plus 0 0.27 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.03. If you add all those together, that's 0 0.78. So these add up to 0 0.78, so therefore u must make it add up to 1. So therefore 1 minus 0 0.78, u equals 0 0.22. Okay, so now we've got D. Now, with with this question here, let's just make it zero point two two. This question here, we've got probability of D slash R and B. So, this slash here, that means given that. So the whole given that thing means that the probability is out of that. So R and B. Um, is going to be this one here. Because all of these things here um, are the probability of R and the probability of B. This one here and this one here, these ones don't contain B. So R and B is going to be out of 0 0.6. So the probability is out of 0 0.6. So from this probability here of R and B, I'll just scribble out those two values there, 0.22 and 0.03. So out of the probability of here, the probability that it's D as well is this one here. So it's going to be 0.27 out of 0.6, which is 0.45. Now the next one is it's the probability 
T or given that the slash is given that R and not B. So if we have a look at that there, the probability of it being R and not B is going to be this one here and this one here because both of these ones are in R but they're not in B. So if we add those two together, that's going to be out of a probability of 0 0.37. And that's what the whole given that um, slash means. So that's what the probability is going to be out of. So if you have a look at those, and the one that is it is D out of these two things here is just this one. So it's 0 0.15 out of 0 0.37. That's a fraction that's simply 15 out of 37, or three significant figures, 0 0.405 is 0 0.405 occurring as well, if you want to make it like that. Okay, so a coach load of 77 customers arrive at Harry's Hotel. Of these 77 customers, 40 have booked a room and breakfast, 37 have booked a room without breakfast. How many of these 77 customers will book dinner? So if they have booked room and breakfast, so that's room and breakfast, the probability they're going to have dinner, well that's this probability here. So we are looking at how many people are having dinner given that they've got room and breakfast, which is exactly what we've um, just found there. So it's 0 0.45 is the probability that these people will have breakfast. So 0 0.45 times 40, so 0.45 times 40 is 18. So we're expecting 18 of these to have breakfast and have booked a room without breakfast. So this here is given that they've got a room and not breakfast, which is this thing here, on the probability they're having dinner. Which, and we want to know how many of these people are having dinner. So it's going to be, rather than 0 0.405, if we use the exact fraction, so it's going to be 15 out of 37 times by um, 37, which equals 15. So out of the 77 customers, that's going to be 33 that are going to be booking dinner. So that's how you do that question. Again, it pays to really read the question, take this one carefully, take it slowly. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the 2015 question on this. So again, um, it doesn't, oh, it does say <laughs> draw a Venn diagram. So there you go. So if we're going to draw a Venn diagram, we should always start off with a big old box. So there you go, we've got a box. And we've got biology, chemistry, and physics. So, biology, chemistry, and physics. So I'm going to choose a different color because it's not showing up brilliantly. Let's try that again. Better. So, three circles biology, chemistry, and physics. Now, with these Venn diagrams, when you've got three circles, whatever Venn diagrams, whether it's got two or three circles, Always off with the overlap. So here we've got um, three, which is in the overlap. Now the next one is five. St uh, five students study both physics and biology. So physics and biology is this overlap here. So five's got to be in that overlap, but we've already got three in there, so there must be a further two that's going to be in that. Eleven study both chemistry and physics. So we have a look at the chemistry and physics overlap, which is this one here. That's got to add up to 11. There's three in there already, so that must be eight. Seven, study both uh, biology and chemistry. So therefore, that one there must be four, for the exact same reason as before. Now, we know that 30 study physics. Now, so far in the physics circle here, we have got 10, we've got 13 already. We've got two, three, and the eight. That's 13 already. And we know that 30 study physics in total, so therefore that's going to be 17. 28 students study chemistry. So if we add together the 4, the 3, and the 8, that's going to be 15. So there's a further 13 that study chemistry. And we've got 20 which study biology, so if we add up the biology circle, at the moment it's 9. So therefore there must be a further 11. Now we know that there's going to be 80 students in total, so what we do is we add up all the numbers and that we've got in our Venn diagram so far. And on the outside, we're going to need to make that add up to 80. So we know the physics circle, that adds up to 30. So 
43, 47, 48, 58. So we need to add another 22 on the outside to make that up to 80. And there you go. That's our five marks. Remember, the box around the outside you need to put down because that's going to be one of the marks. And then once you've got that, we've just got to do the probabilities. So a year 12 student at the college is selected at random. Find the probability that the student studies chemistry but not biology or physics. So that's going to be 13. There's 13 that study chemistry and neither of the other two. And that's out of a total of 80. Find the probability that the student studies chemistry or physics or both. So these study chemistry, these study physics, and these two study both. So we're looking at those there. So if we add that up, that's going to be 30, 34, 37, 47. That's going to be 47 out of 80. Right, now the next one, this is word again, given. Given that the uh, student studies chemistry or physics or both, so therefore we're only looking at these here, because none of the other students study chemistry or physics or both. So we're only looking out of 47. So the whole given that um, phrase means that we're going to change the denominator. And the denominator is only these people here, so that's 47. Now, given that they study chemistry or physics or both, find the probability that the student does not study biology. So, from the from this thing that we've highlighted here, if we do a different kind of we choose black. The ones that don't study biology are going to be these 17, these 8, and these 13. So that's going to be 38 out of 47. Determine whether biology, studying biology and studying chemistry are statistically independent. So, Statistically independent means that if they are, so if they are, then the probability of B times by the probability of C will equal the probability of B and C if they are independent. You might want to put independent or statistically independent. So the probability of studying biology. There are 20 students that study biology, so that's going to be 20 out of 80. Times by the probability of C. So the probability that they study chemistry is 28 out of 80. So if we do that, um, 20 out of 80 times by 28 out of 80, and that equals 7 out of 80. Now, the probability of B and C, so that's the overlap of biology and chemistry, which is this here, equals 7 out of 80. So we can say that 7 out of 80 equals 7 out of 80. Therefore, statistically, statistically independent. So that's sometimes quite tricky to get your head around, but if you've seen a few of them, then they start to make sense. Um, so that's that question. That's 2015, 2014. Let's have a look at that one. Oh, let's get it in shot. There we go. Right, so these ones with the letters, they confuse the hell out of people. So what you do is you start to make them make sense by doing a diagram. So we've got two circles. We've got, or we've got two events, which are A and B. Let's do that, A and B. So here, the probability of not A and B is 0 0.22. So therefore, it can't be in A, but it is in B. So therefore, that's that bit of the diagram. The probability of not A and not B is 0 0.18. So that's the bit on the outside. So the probability of A must be what's left. So if we add those two, two together, 0 0.4, so therefore... 0 0.6 is what we've got left over. Find the probability of A or B. So that's going to be everything inside that circle there. Well, 0 0.18 is on the outside, so therefore 0 0.82 must be the bit that's on the inside. And again, if you don't do the Venn diagram, it makes it a lot trickier to see. Now we've got the probability of A given B is 0 0.6. 
we've got to find the probability of A and B. So, the fact that it says given that B, so if we call this X to start off, because that's the thing that we're trying to find. Uh, given that the probability of A and B equals 0 0.6, we've got to work out this one here. So the probability of A and B, the fact that you've got a given B means that the probability of B is going to be on the bottom. So if we have a look at this here, the probability of B is 0 0.22 plus X. Now the probability of it is A means if we're only looking at circle B here, the bit that involves A is this bit here, which is the X. It's going to be X out of... 0 0.22 plus x, and we know that equals 0 0.6. So it's just some basic algebra. You times both sides by this here, so we've got x equals 0 0.6 times by 0 0.22 plus x. And if we do that, 0 0.6 times 0.22, we've got x equals 0 0.132 plus x. 0.6x, so 0 0.4, if we take away 0.6x from both sides, equals 0.132, so x equals 0.132 divided by 0 0.4, which equals 0 0.33. So there you go. And now if we draw our diagram a little bit neater, we can do a full diagram now. So... A, we've got B, we know that 0 0.33 is in the overlap, we've said that 0 0.22 is in there, so we can now work out what this one is, because they all add up to 1, so that's 0 0.4, 0 0.73, so 0 0.27, has got to be that one there. Fun, so to determine whether or not A and B are independent, again, it's this test for independence, so if they are independent, so if they are independent, independent, then the probability of A times by the probability of B equals the probability of A and B. So the probability of A, if we have a look at this, is 0 0.6. The, oh, which we knew anyway. The probability of B, if we have a look at that, is 0 0.55. So that's the probability of A times the probability of B. So that's 0 0.6 times 0 0.55. Oh, 0 0.6 times 0.55. And that equals 0 0.33. The probability of A and B, which we know from this one here is, or from the diagram there, is 0 0.33. So, or if we write therefore instead, that's a little bit more mathematical. Therefore probability of A and B equals the probability of A times by the probability of B, therefore independent, or statistically independent. There you go. So that's how to do, that's how to use Venn diagrams to help with probability.